Good morning, fellow Plexers. This afternoon, we're going to try to help Charlie learn how to properly structure his Plex Media storage, whether it's on a single hard drive, multiple hard drives, or whether it's on a network share. So first off, we're just going to go to a master list of all of Plex's support articles. And I'm going to drop down to media, I just had it, your media, and we're going to pop into naming and organizing your movie files. So Plex basically gives the basic structure. You want a media folder, whether it's a shared folder or a local folder or on a hard drive or a folder on an external hard drive. So you have your main media folder. And then they have library folders, a movie library folder, a music library folder, and a TV shows library folder. But what Plex doesn't do, they don't address how to keep things simple if you want multiple movie or TV show libraries. <clears throat> and that's where I come in. Also, they're using uppercase um, letters what I'm going to suggest, no uppercase letters and no spaces in any of these folder names, which is really a requirement for Linux systems, um, a Docker container. It isn't a rule that you need to fall under Windows, and I have no idea about whether a Mac needs the same rule as Linux does or not. So basically, this article does not say to use sort folders of any types in the individual library folders. So when I first started with Plex at the beginning of 2019, it was on my older Synology NAS server, and I did not know what I was doing. I didn't read hardly any of the guides. I didn't know they existed for the most part. So I simply had a Plex share on that NAS, just by happenstance, it was lowercase. And then I created a folder called My Movie Collection. And I use sort folders inside that, which you really should not do. So as you see, I had all the animated movies in this folder. Adventure movies went in this folder. And, and it really became kind of a pain because you had to look up the main genre of, of a movie. And some movies really have two main genres, and which one do you put it in? Um, and then when you want to find a movie to see if you have this copy or that copy of it, you might not know where it is without checking Plex first to then edit the movie to see the location. It just is not scalable. The TV show collection was more straightforward because... I have a, a, a show folder and then the episodes inside and everything just worked out according to plan in that regard. So a couple years later, I picked up a new Synology NAS. I thought my troubles were so deep that I wanted to um, just move things over slowly to the new NAS, leaving my friends and family still connected to the old one. So I kind of maintained two servers until I finished the project and moved everybody over to the new one. And this is how I've set it up. I have a Plex Media Share, and most likely you might just name that media, all lowercase. Discount this media public domain folder. This is for my test videos when I want to show media playing. I, I won't get in trouble with... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong folder. This is a backup of my Docker folder um, from a public domain Plex server I started up. So I have sort folders for each library type, but they're not sort folders inside a library folder. And that may sound confusing until you think about it. So there's five main Plex library types, movie, music, photo, TV, and video. So I have all these on the same level. Then of course, I put my pre-roll videos in the same level just, just to find them easily. And we won't 
we won't talk about this folder. I can't show screenshots in the um, Plex Media Server Support Group, but it's fine to talk about this in the video. For those of you with an automatic acquisition setup, you want those acquisitions to land on the same hard drive or the same network share that your Plex Media is in. So when it's renamed and moved, it's an instant move instead of a copy and then delete process. If this was located on a separate hard drive or a separate network share, it has to be copied across the network or copied from one local drive to another. And once that's complete, the original file gets deleted. It's time consuming. It's resource intensive. Keeping this folder in the same local drive or the same network share means everything is instantaneous when it's renamed and moved and all that stuff. So if you're interested in this little specific area, the trash guide basically tells you to set things up this way. And my setup is not is not a match for the trash guides, but it's the same principle. I like my setup better. Um, and this is just another backup folder that I've just stuck here so I could find it easy. So inside my movie sort folder, my movie library sort folder, I have some old media that just isn't part of anything that I've been too lazy to go through to see if I need to keep it, rename it. And I have a concert folder. And Charlie, this is this is based on your last comment. You have concerts in another video library or another video folder, other video folder. When most concerts are listed at both TMDB and IMDB, they can be a regular movie library just named Concerts. You'll see a Concert by the Lake from 2010 has a TMDB um, source ID number to it. They, they all do. Um, you may have, you may find a concert that's not named exactly as it's listed at either IMDB or TMDB, but chances are if you look for it, it's there under a different name. And just like any other Plex movie library, file, or like any other Plex movie, I use FileBot to get these names quickly. All right, so I have a separate documentary library. And inside this library folder, there are no genre short um, um, genre sort folders. There's no sort folders of any type. There's just the movie name folders. Um, same with the kids library. So the kids library in Plex points to this structure. If I pointed a library here, it would include the media and all of these library sort folders. So each individual library gets pointed to where it belongs. Um, you can see I have a separate stand-up, and I think you mentioned stand-up too. All these stand-up comedy routines are in the database as a movie. And of course they have the TMDB source ID listed, so Plex finds them easily. Um, I have a lot of theatrical collections, and um, you'll see everything's in a folder for the movie name, except for a few things like this, um, or this, or um, media that's unlisted at both IMDB and TMDB. I, I do want to sort that out, just so it's not mixed in with all the rest, because I know it's not official media that Plex can scan easily. Um, and if I was ever moving my library someplace else, everything in these three folders, I would know that I would have to supply metadata for manually. So technically these are sort folders inside a library folder, but they're very specific and they're not just um, used willy nilly. And let's see, separate 4K collection. And if you look, at my my Plex web app here and let's go to the 4k well let's edit that this is exactly where I'm pointing at if I wanted to I could point higher so because I'm running um, Plex in a docker container on Unraid these are really the aliases to the, the, the media 
folders. And I just named them special so they'd stand out, like Plex Video Media, Plex Movie Media, which is where I'm going to click into. If I just took this as a root folder for this library path, every single movie in all these different libraries would then be scanned into the 4K movie library. So if I do that, this is going to capture everything. But of course, I don't want to do that. I want to um, point this library specifically at just my movie 4K folder. And I can easily have multiple libraries. Let's, let's do it this way so we can see it better without distraction. Okay, so here's the symbol for movies. Concerts, documentary, movies, movie 4K, movie kids, performing arts, stand-up. And then these are my multiple TV show libraries. TV shows, TV shows DVR, TV show kids. I have two music libraries. Um, the main music library with everything and then just a small one of maybe a dozen mixtape. And these are the other video libraries. I just threw some Christmas fireplace videos that I ripped from YouTube into a library. I've done different um, DVD projects over the years, mostly photos set to music, you know, for somebody's funeral, for uh, a family member's anniversary party, that sort of thing. And I just played around with a small music video collection. Um, didn't go far with that. Uh, then I have my pre-rolls, especially specifically my holiday pre-rolls in an other video collection, just so I can look at them quickly. This isn't shared with anybody. And then I have some family videos that have been converted for one of my friends that I put on the server so I could share this li library specifically with her and her family. Um, so anyway, there's a sort folder for every library type. Instead of trying to have one big movie library with all this different type of content in it. Now, I would never create a genre-based movie library because when you get into the actual library, you can create a collection if you want. So let's go into the movie library and let's view it by all the, um, the movies. And let's see, let's change it to title. So if I wanted to create a collection, I could just click this little dot and then click any other movie. And I could manually add these movies to a collection by... No, hold on. I think I might have picked a collection. Yeah, I did. All right, so I picked the Three Men collection, which screwed things up. So I've just selected a bunch of things, and now the pencil icon pops up, and I can go to Tags, and I can manually just add it to any collection I want. I don't know why this popped up, but so I've got different manual collections I could just pick and add this to. Or... You can create a smart collection with the Add To button here. Create Smart Collection, and now I'm going to create a genre-based one. So I could pick Genre, Is, hit the drop-down arrow, and say I wanted all crime movies. Um, or Film Noir. I think I saw a Film Noir folder in one of your screenshots. Right now, they're all sorted by title, but maybe I want to sort them by year. So now they're sorted from newest to oldest, and maybe I want to reverse that, so I'll click the by year again. And now they're sorted oldest to newest. And if I chose save as, I can give it any name I want. And let me call this test so I can find it easy. And if I hit create, now I have all these in a smart collection. Any other movie I add that has that film noir tag built into it will automatically get added to this smart collection. And there's really no reason to have a separate film noir library when I can have a collection. 
and I can even edit this. I can supply my own poster. Maybe there's a nice film noir collection poster at the poster database. Maybe I've created one myself, but I can simply choose the image and do the same with the background. If I wanted to, I could give a little summary. I could type my favorites. You know, anything you want, you just spruce this up. So that's, that's the biggest reason you don't want to use sort folders inside your movie library folder. It gets, it gets sticky trying to manage things later, and, and it really doesn't help you with customization inside the Plex interface. And if this was a manual collection, um, Film Noir is not a good I, choice. But say I had created a manual collection for all the Star Trek movies. Then if I went to my TV show library and created a manual Star Trek collection for all the Star Trek TV shows, Plex does this really neat thing where at the bottom of either collection you entered, you'll see the collection in the other library. And say you had a documentary library, movie library, and you had three Star Trek documentaries. If you created a, a regular collection with the same name of Star Trek, that would also cross with a TV show at the bottom of the movie collection, and so on. And say, say my performing arts library had two fictional Star Trek um, musical theater productions. Well, if you created that collection in that performing arts library and it was named the same, that would also appear. So collections can cross-reference if they're named exactly the same. Unfortunately, Plex hasn't enabled that feature on Smart Collections yet, which I think is a crying shame. Okay, so let's delete that Film Noir and go back to the structure. So, like you, I did things the wrong way, and as my collection grew, it wasn't sustainable. And unfortunately, I was very very bad at naming things. Um, let's try to find some examples. Well, let me look at modified first because the oldest stuff was the worst. And some of this got fixed along the way and some of it's still original. My previous screenshot had some examples, and now it's going to take a second to find. Because some of the early stuff, I did not put parentheses around the year. All right, I can't find any example, but you'll see how my, my naming schemes evolve. This looks like a manual file name. This is done by FileBot. FileBot included the, let's do it this way. FileBot automatically included the source ID for TMDB, the, the database ID number. And it added in some media characteristics. This is a 360p um, resolution video, AVC, is how it was encoded, it's two channels, and the audio is AC3. None of that information is in this other stuff when I was manually naming it, so that's why I love FileBot so much. It really gives you detailed information right in the file name while still being very um, Plex compliant. So if we go to the new structure again, and I go back into the Plex share on my NAS, and if I go into the photo one, I've got some unsorted photos from my youngest son and his wife and their family. And then I just have a shared photo folder. If I go into my video for the other video, this is where you can see the Christmas fireplace videos. Um, my Christmas pre-rolls, which I renamed poorly and just stuck with it without fixing it. Um, This is a family friends video conversions, um, some music videos. And if I click into that, I didn't do much playing with this. The, the most fun part were, there's, <laughs> were these Linux parody videos that I thought were really funny. But of course, 
nobody's watched any of this off my server. People just don't care about this. Um, the only thing that's been watched is the members of one family watching some of their old conversions and their parents' 50th anniversary video occasionally. Um, most of my friends and family don't care about this stuff. They're just watching movie and TV shows. But I do have a few people like me who love live theater, and this collection is for them. So I know this is kind of rambling and getting long, but you've got to follow the documents. And at no place does Plex say to use um, sort folders inside the actual movie library folder. And I know when I type about it, it sounds confusing because I'm using sort folders for library types. So I have a movie sort folder for, li for all my movie libraries. I have a TV sort folder for all my TV show libraries. But when I click into that, this is my main TV show library that that is being pointed to from Plex, just as my kids' TV show library is only pointing here. And inside these, there are no sort folders, just the show folders. And then the episodes are listed underneath. And it's always Seasonal 1. It's not Season 1. It's not Season 1, Alvin and the Chipmunks. It's not Alvin and the Chipmunks Season 1. It, it's always Seasonal 1. Because it's always SO1 here. Now, Plex is pretty smart. If you don't follow this and you just put Season 1, with or without a space, it'll work. If you didn't have any season folders and just lumped all the episodes generally into this area for all seasons it'll still work it just it makes it messy and of course when you go to the official naming document for TV shows Plex shows seasonal one seasonal two being used they don't show season one they don't show anything besides seasonal one never a written example of anything else and then that reminds me the only the only difference with um, this is some shows are listed at TMDB and TVDB with um, a different format, it's a season, space, year. And if you look at Adam Curtis at TVDB, that's exactly how it's listed here. Adam Curtis Films, pop into the season folders and you'll see that's how it's listed. So when you, when you pop into a folder, this is the season episode code, S1984E01. Um, other examples, Ken Burn Films. I can't remember if Great Performances is listed that way too, or American Experiences, but sometimes long-running shows or anything that um, TVDB decided to make into a fake TV show, like the Tom and Jerry cartoons from the 40s, 50s, and 60s, will be done sometimes in a similar fashion. Okay, that's not it. So, at TVDB, these episodes were really old movie serials that TVDB decided to package in a way that we could all add to a Plex TV show library easily. So they're using seasons based on decades. Season 1940, 1950, 1960. And when you click on the episode code, reflects that S1960 E01. So you really you really can't name things without doing a brief check at TVDB or TMDB. But this show, the Tom and Jerry or the Tom and Jerry show isn't listed at TMDB because it was never a real TV show. The geniuses at TVDB decided to do this for us so that we had a way to organize this media better in Plex. None of us would want all of these little movie shorts to be listed as a separate movie 
in a Plex movie library that, the, that we then have to add to a collection. It just works out so much better as a fake TV show. So I know this is getting long. Let me just check in here. Um, so I know you have an adventure folder for Indiana Jones, and I covered that with how I used to do things. I think I actually had an Indiana Jones folder. And it just, just doesn't work as well as just having all the proper structure. So this is my main movie library. And if I can find it, those sort of movies just belong in their own movie folder that's properly named. I always use the TMDB and it's just reflective of that. And FileBot is very easy. Um, actually, let me go back. Uh, let me see, let me use this one. I'll open it up in FileBot, show that quickly. The interface is kind of small for FileBot. So because I have my own custom expressions, I have to hold down my shift key to see Plexus. Plex has organized um, movies for Plex, and if I click on it, it's going to create a media folder, and then a movie, movies folder, and then create the the movie um, name folder, just like mine would with the source ID number. And then it's going to name the movie in a more simpler manner than what I do. It's not putting the TMDB number into it, and it's not giving media characteristics. Just using Plexus or, or FileBot's default um, expression will give you a file name that will that can't miss. But you've got to set your folders up to match this. It's got to be media with a capital M, and it has to be movies with a capital M. And that doesn't work for me. So my custom expressions, I can name this to the TMDB and create structure. And you'll see the green dot means it's already created that way. I can also leave it in place and just rename it without creating structure. And again, the green dot means it's already set up that way. I can also name it with the IMDB source ID and create structure. So this is going to be the same structure that, it, that the movie files are already in. The only difference is this will rename it to use the IMDB source ID of the TT whatever number. And then of course I have a custom expression that simply just switches to the IMDB source ID without creating structure. And, and these are not hard to set up. If I edit the preset and I go to my full normal structure that I use the most, you simply set a new preset, you paste in the structure I have, or the, or the, the expression I have in um, one of my tutorial videos. As a data source, you, you select the movie database, language is English, Everything's left default. Rename, none, opportunistic, none. And you save the preset. And you open the media up in FileBot, and you just go down and you pick that preset. And if I edit the one for the TMDB structure, let's see where we have to move to. It's basically the same expression, except this part. This part is calling for the... Um, um, information to be pulled from IMDB instead of TMDB. And I've got these, these formulas already worked out. And again, if you don't want to use my formulas, FileBot has some default ones. Um, organize episodes for Plex, organize movies for Plex. And that's really all you, you need for um, compliant, simple naming. I, I like mine better. I really like being able to look at a file and say, oh, that's a 1080p encoded with um, H.264, six-channel audio, AAC. Just looking at the file name tells me everything I need to know, and I can look 
through my file browser. I can look through the Plex web app, which will be the last thing we'll do because this is getting long and rambling. Okay, so where's my web app? We'll go to my movie library. Um, I'll click into the Three Men collection and I'll edit this movie and I'll go to info and again you can see the file name right here you can see all the structure and again this is my alias with a docker container um, so that's what Plex sees for you to point to and it doesn't see my actual structure that's on the Synology NAS and by the way I'm running I'm running Plex in a, in a docker container on an um, 11th Gen i3 NUC running Unraid, which points back to my Synology NAS. Tremendous um, iGPU in that little 11th Gen uh, i5 NUC compared to the Celeron processor in my NAS, which is a 9th Gen um, CPU with a weaker iGPU. So anyway, long and rambling, but everything starts... Everything starts with Plex's documentation, and you really don't need to know too much besides the Your Media section, naming and organizing your movie files, naming and organizing your TV show files, and once you get the hang of the basics, check out both multiple editions and multiple versions. Multiple editions requires a Plex pass, multiple versions doesn't. So we'll click on in that. Say you have two versions of a movie, an SD version and a 720p version and a 1080p version. Well, Plex tells you for the file name to use the official separator of a space dash space and then simply put 1080p for one and SD for the other. It could be 720p. Everything else is the same and both versions can go in the same folder. If you have a Plex Pass, the multiple editions allows you to add the edition tag by simply adding this little edition tag to the file name. So this is the same thing. You have um, two movies, and they're actually not being shown in their own movie folder, but these are two movies with different editions and different edition tags, and Plex will add that tag when it's displayed. This shows it a little bit better. Um, so this could, all these could be, this and all these could be in the same master folder. But this example is having the plain movie in its own folder and then having different versions of the director's cut edition in a separate movie folder. This is kind of weird who would have that many different versions of it, but this is showing how you can also use a plain period instead of the space dash space as an official separator between different parts of a movie file name or an episode file name. So this is, this is more complex, and I simply put multiple editions in the same folder as the regular movie, and of course my movie folder has the source ID, also with it so then my file names would have the movie um, and then it would have the source ID in, in the curly brackets and then it would have the addition in the curly brackets and then it would have my versioning naming for all the codec information um, but again this is more advanced and it requires a Plex pass so this got super rambly and hopefully this will be easier to follow than me trying to type it all out. I'll get this on YouTube and reply to you. Have a great day.